we've been reporting, the United Nations now says so far more than 150,000 Ukrainians have fled to safety in Poland, Moldova, and other neighboring countries. Russian soldiers pushing steadily ahead to take control of the capital of Kyiv. The UN says up to 4 million people could leave Ukraine if the fighting continues. For more, we're joined now by Nicholas Grossman, a political science professor at the University of Illinois. Professor Grossman, thank you for being here, watching what's been happening over the past week. What is your impression of what's going on? Has anything surprised you in the past couple of days? It's been a little surprising that the Ukrainians have put up such a strong resistance to the Russian military advance. It looks like uh, Russia also seems to be at least a bit surprised that there has been so much fighting that it probably that uh, Putin seems to have expected that the Ukrainian government or at least hoped that the Ukrainian government would collapse, that the military would collapse and instead has been meeting really fierce resistance. Uh, Ukrainian President Zelensky is staying in the country, is putting out videos showing that uh, he's there, that he's in Kyiv in the capital and trying to rally people. Um, and so both of those have been maybe more successful than I had expected at first. But I also think, unfortunately, uh, the war is about to get even uglier. Mm. Somber words. Uh, NATO really was formed, as we've been reporting, to prevent Russian aggression in part, right? So now isn't Putin at least succeeding in that goal of keeping Ukraine out? Because even if Ukraine meets all the criteria, now it's a huge liability that would involve fighting on the ground with the NATO allies. NATO was not a serious contender for, uh, sorry, Ukraine was not a serious contender for NATO membership. They had talked about it a little, but it wasn't something that had moved forward a lot. And in particular, NATO was always wary of having a former Soviet country with long historical ties to Russia being in NATO. It would be a big gamble for NATO to commit to make a defense of Ukraine. Um, essentially, the idea of NATO is that the United States and also Britain and France and other countries have to be ready to start World War III if anyone attacks any NATO country. And the US and others are not willing to do that for Ukraine. However, it looks like Putin's hope of trying to either weaken NATO or divide NATO or move at minimum, move Ukraine away from its closeness to the European Union seems to have backfired. There is pretty much nothing that can inspire the Europeans to start thinking of the, themselves as a collective unit, worrying about their defense together, than a Russian threat. And this overt Russian threat has seen more Western unity, more NATO unity, more European unity, and even more international unity than many expected. And it seems like than Putin and his senior advisors expected. So you're an international relations professor. Who is allied with Russia and how does it affect the choices made by them and by the White House? Russia has very few people on their side. There is Belarus. They got some positive statements from Bashar al-Assad, the dictator of Syria, and uh, also have had some positive statements from Donald Trump and from some American media figures like Tucker Carlson. Other than that, pretty much everyone is either on Ukraine's side or being neutral. So some big countries, India, which has a pretty close relationship with Russia, has been neutral. China started off by saying something about how uh, big countries have a right to do what they want and that uh, this was America's fault anyway and America forced Russia's hand and they've backed off that to be more negative about the fighting and to call for peace. Um, where the United States and Canada and many European countries and Japan um, have all been very strong in their condemnation of of Russia and have put together a series of pretty damaging sanctions, perhaps not as most as the most hawkish people would like to see, but something just announced today where some Russian banks will be cut off from the SWIFT system of international payments, which will make it really hard for them to do international business. And uh, there will be some restrictions on the Russian central bank which will prevent them from taking reserves that they have in euros, dollars, or yen and changing them into rubles that they can use to cover the losses for the other economic problems that they're having. So the West has been largely united. A lot of other parts of the world are behind them. Most people are staying neutral and uh, Putin finds himself with very few friends. Of course, still a very formidable army at his disposal, but very few friends outside of Russia. And the largest uh, nuclear weapon arsenal in the world, too. All right, Professor Grossman, thank you. I always appreciate you breaking things down and explaining it for us. All right. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.